What is going on, Adventure Nation? We are in California's Central Coast, and we are making our way slowly but surely north to San Francisco. This is the Motorhome Experiment. We are currently in San Simeon, California. Yes which is the home of Hearst Castle. We're gonna check that out in just a little while, I'll take you guys along with us. But we're in the San Simeon State Park campground, of which there are several sections. We are in, which section? Uh, just the Simeon Creek? The creek, yeah, San we're in the, Simeon Creek, yeah. And in the creek, there's an upper and a lower. We are in the lower. There are two different types of sites here, 25 foot and 35 foot, that's it. And then they have a washburn section that is 35 foot. No. The washburn oh, the is, washburn's 25. It's all 25 foot. Right. But we drove it, we scoped it basically last night. And we realized that there's a lot of big coaches back there. Like we could fit in there. There's two different pricing. This one was uh, $35 with taxes and all that. A little bit of 40 like 42 uh, The other spot, the washburn, is $25. So $10 less. And both of them no hookups, but both of them have picnic tables and they have fire pits. The only thing is that you have to drive a little bit further to right. get to the Washburn. Washburn's considered primitive camping, which is weird because this is this primitive, is primitive camping. camping. There's camping. no hookups whatsoever. And you can see this is, our, our coach is 34 feet. This is supposed to be a site for 35 feet. And we're not to the back at all and still had space to come back except for running into their picnic table. Oh, we could have moved. But we could have moved the picnic table. They could move the picnic table. I think they could fit bigger coaches in here and I think they're really missing the boat on having some of the, the larger coaches come in. I but I think a lot of the state parks, mostly California, we have noticed. I mean, they have an old system and they have not reviewed their sites or right. so stuff that has been there forever, they have not changed it. So they need to come back and resize the spots because a lot of coaches, big coaches like ours could fit in a lot of the parks. Yeah, so if you had a, a 38 foot coach, you could come to San Simeon Park and just tell them you have a 35 foot coach. Don't tell them we said that, but you could and get away with it because you could. There's spots that you can fit in. If it says 35, you can probably fit a 38 footer in there. 40 feet, you're getting. I don't think so. Well, class A because of the overhang. Do all of them have overhang? Like all the other stuff? Yeah, most of the other stuff has overhang as well. The 25 footers you're not going to fit in uh, for anything over 25 feet. They're pretty tight, but pretty tight. I think the 35 foot spots you would get into. But nice campground. It is nice. Really quiet. It's quiet. Very quiet. Check it out. It's not very busy because the majority of the sites are 25 foot. So there's just not that many people in here with 25 footers. But let's head up the road to Hearst Castle and go check that out. Get our tour on. We actually had to unhook the tow dolly. So Surprisingly. Yeah. Just the only reason I unhooked it is because I didn't want to back it into the picnic table. So... We have arrived at Hearst Castle, as you can see. Plenty of big parking spaces. Even if you're 40 or 45 towing, you shouldn't have a problem here. And there is plenty of parking, so. Yes. Hearst Castle it is. And as typical in motorhome experiment fashion, one of the coolest parts of the castle, the Neptune pool, is closed. Par for the course. Why, Lorena? <laughs> That's a super cool feature. Too bad. <laughs> We are gonna do two tours today. The first one is Grand Rooms, and then the second one is Upstairs. <clears throat> now we're just loading the bus. All right, if you guys are ready, let's take a tour of the Hearst Castle. Let's go. Let's do it.
What do you think so far? Oh, I would love to stay here. Why not? At least. <laughs> We've already done the first tour, Lori. We've seen the grand rooms. What did you think? Um, oh, they're pretty amazing. I mean, just how massive and how many antiques are there. Pretty amazing. Very cool, right? What is annoying is like they tell you do not step on the Persian rugs that are like hundreds of years old, if not thousands, and people will, will still do it. Yeah. Like, oh. We are done with the grand rooms tour and now we're gonna do the upstairs suites no idea what this is I'm assuming it's where they it's, slept the suites are upstairs got it <laughs> we gotta climb some stairs it's gonna be a lot of stairs ready to get your stair master on yeah need to work out somehow right Walk into this next room, we'll get to see the elevator. This is the first one Hearst put in, and it does still work, although rather carefully. Yeah. <laughs> no, was that for guests? They guests, the staff, door. and Mr. Hearst. My goodness. Unbelievable. That's the room we were up in. We were taking the shot from the inside with the ornate windows. Okay. Pretty cool. So the tour of the upstairs was really, really cool. Really worth it. Like really, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I'm glad we, we did that. And now we're gonna find our way out and we've got a long drive ahead of us. We're going the wrong way. We're not going the wrong way. Oh, I think we're going the right way. You were saying? 
like it's this way. Right, that's what I thought you were saying. I actually think that we have one more thing that we see on the way out, which is the indoor pool. So we'll shoot that quick. And then we gotta get down the road. We've got some driving to do yet and... We still have like four hours and it's already four o'clock. Yeah, so <laughs> it's gonna be fun. We're gonna arrive in the dark, oh, um. so not cool. Okay, this deserves a how cool is that. Holy smokes. That is nuts. All right, that was, that was, that's just too cool. Thank you. Okay, Lorena, as we make it back out to the RV, let's rate the Hearst Castle for these folks and let them know if it's worth coming or not. So We have done Hearst Castle before. Yes. So this is not our first time. And the one thing I can remember is how cool it was. Like, it is really, really I, cool. I agree. Just the amount of art pieces and the architecture in it is just so cool. Um, I will rate myself a day trip. So if you're close to here, at least make it through the day and give it. If you're gonna do only one tour in the movie, I would say about two hours. Right. But with the two uh, tours that we got in the movie, probably what? Five hours. Five hours now. Yeah. Four I would to say five like hours. Three to four hours. Well, we started this one at. Probably one, at one, one and thirty. It's four mm -hmm. what? So four hours. thirty, and then another hour for the thing. So you're looking at five thirty. Well, so yeah, it would have been four and a half five, hours. Four to five hours, I will say. And they have also a coffee shop, and they have a sandwich shop, and that we didn't get to use at all. But so you can spend some time here and still have a break. Yeah, if you're going to do all the tours that they have to offer, I think you're looking at a full, a full day, day. Yeah. easily. But with that being said, I, I initially thought that maybe it would be a bucket list, but Lori's right. It's not something that you would fly over from Europe to see because you guys have castles. If you live in Europe, this is <laughs> not really that much of a castle, but I do agree it would be a, a day trip, which is a, a three. So get here and see it if you're within a day of it. It is really, really cool. Yes. The tours are 25 bucks per section. So we paid 50 bucks each to see the two different tours, 25 bucks each. And they still have the cottages and kitchen tour too. And they have the cottages and kitchens tour, we could have added to that. So it's not super cheap, but it is really worth it. It is a full day. You could make a full day of entertainment out of it. And I really think it's cool. And a lot of great information we learned. And we had some great tour guides as well, which, were, which were nice. it was a non-busy day. So literally our tour, the second one, was six of us. Yeah. That they, they said that's a semi-private tour. Yeah, semi-private tour is normally eight. And because there was only six of us on our last tour, it worked out all right. So yes. let's rock Time and roll. Time to go. We have a long way to yeah, go. Yeah, we're not going to make camp before night. All right, Lori. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Get there when we get there. But we'll get there when we get there. So, Monterey, here we come. This is the Monterey Fairgrounds RV Park. It is basically a parking lot with hookups, but that's all good. People out enjoying the night. We're down in the back. Cool. Well, it's a little bit later than we like to arrive, but we made it to the Monterey Fairgrounds RV Park and we're kind of down in the back. It's just a 
little open lot with some mulch and stuff, but it's a means to an end. It gets us here in Monterey for a couple of nights and allows us to get out and explore a little bit before we head on up to San Francisco. So we're done for the night. Gonna head inside, get some work done, try to get a video out. And we'll catch you guys in the morning. We are at the Monterey RV campground. Actually, it's RV park. Yeah, fairgrounds. It's, it's a fairgrounds yeah. campground. Very convenient to Monterey, so we're yeah. gonna go in and do some exploring. Ready to go? Well, there's one must in my list here in Monterey, so we're gonna do that. One must? Just one? Yeah, the rest can be just whatever, but this is a must for me. Okay, let's go must do it. All right, we've made it down here to Cannery Row. And Lori and I have been here two or three times in the past. Never exploring in Monterey. Never really much. explored. We just kind of stopped, stayed overnight, maybe grabbed dinner down on the wharf, but never came down and hung out on Cannery Row or saw anything down here. And so, this has been something that's been on her list since we started coming here. So today we're gonna hit the aquarium. I want to do it on a Saturday when it's packed the people. That is a nice scooter. And it is Saturday, so this is going to be a wee bit of a nightmare. Like I said, we always pick the best days to tour around. $50 a piece, they are proud of their aquarium. We're gonna be only like two hours here. And we are in. The sea is a very fascinating place and discovering this stuff and seeing it is just, it's amazing. And it really makes me want to go get certified to be a diver. Okay, you guys are going to think I'm joking, but this is actually a shark eggshell case. Mother shark expels this and the baby shark grows in there until it's old enough to leave. That's, that is crazy. That is crazy. Holy smokes. I did not know that sharks laid eggs. Pretty crazy, isn't it? Oh, it's pretty amazing. This section. The aquarium has a lot of exhibits, obviously, with fish and things like that, but it also has educational stuff, and this whole area is dedicated to trash in the oceans, and it is really, really disgusting. So don't contribute to that. Don't throw trash in the ocean. 
pretty crazy stuff. Not cool, folks. Is it just me or do these guys always look angry? The Monterey Aquarium is really pretty cool because it's not, again, just about you know coming and seeing a fish. It's a conservation uh, center. It's also an education center, so it teaches people to be better human beings and to treat the planet nicer which is cool i don't it's, understand anything what's happening some of our current problems right right it is actually the former home home of the hobden cannery so it's kind of weird that it used to be a sardine cannery so it used to harm fish and now it's actually something that's pro fish so that's pretty cool as well so they have some of the machinery here that you can walk around and see the machines and things that they used to use so that's pretty cool <laughs> And also, I think a lot of people think, oh, if you come and support these places, you're like supporting yeah, just basically having fishes or animals just uh, not being abused, but or being, being in cages or being in like suits and all this. But a lot of these animals, they were actually not surviving in the wild and they had to rescue them and now they're giving them a second chance, basically. So I think that's a cool thing. Like all the others that are here are because of that. Uh, the turtle here because of that. So many of the species here. Right. They're not just here to perform for the people. No. It's just not. That's not the whole point of this place. So pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's always something that we have a hard time with being vegetarians and being animal people, or at least Lori's an animal person. I'm really not an animal person. But that's a whole <laughs> like other them. story. You like them. I, I put up with animals. Let's say that. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, time to get out of here. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Today is all nice and sunny. Beautiful day to, to walk explore. around Monterey and explore, right? Yeah. So we're going to get in the coach and leave. Departure and day. Seems to be like the sunny days are departure days, and the tour around days are like the windy, rainy days. Yeah, yesterday <laughs> yesterday was cold and kind of kind of nasty, and uh, we went explore, but See, we still had a good time. Even the raven and is laughing at us. The raven is laughing. It's sad, and the birds <laughs> are laughing. But we're going to head up the coast. It is going to be an absolutely beautiful drive today between Monterey and San Francisco. We are going to hug the coast on the Pacific Coast Highway. So let's do it. Yeah, and just quick about this campground. This It's not quite a campground. I mean, there is no picnic tables, carpets, or anything. It's basically a place to it's have an RV park. full hookups and to park your RV. That's about it. Very close to downtown Monterey. So that's, a pl that's the reason we chose this one. Right. Uh, very affordable. I think it was like $35 a night or something like that. And uh, we really, really like the location. Park itself, I will not stay here like long periods right, of time. Right, if you're going to do a couple of nights, like check this out. That's the that's the parking area. We were down there beside the little red Winnebago trailer. Uh, if you're going to stay a couple of nights, though, it's super handy to Monterey. But I would say long-term stay, nah, not so much. Yeah, I, I went to use their bathrooms. I didn't see any showers, just the bathrooms, but they were very clean. Oh, but clean. Freaking oh, out because of Ozzy. He's he's not liking the fact that Ozzy's out here in his space. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Ozzy, you ready to do some traveling? You don't look like you're ready to travel, dude. Right. What are you doing out here without your collar on? Oh, let's go. Give Come on. Him a break. Time to go. Let's go. In. He has not been out in two days.
And we have arrived here at the Pacifica RV Resort. So we're gonna go in, get checked in, set up, and then, uh, I don't know what we're doing. Probably gonna get a little work done before we do anything else, but. Today's work day. Today's Travel work day. day work day. Maybe head into the city tomorrow. Yes. Let's get checked in. All right, we are rocking and rolling. I must say, Amanda and Courtney hooked us up. The girls from the office were awesome. And now instead of having to move spots, they did a little shell game magic and we're now able to stay in our same spot. And that's one of the cool things about not knowing exactly what site you're staying in is because as people come in, they can make some shifts and make it work out for everybody. So really good stuff. So we're happy about that. Not that moving one spot one night would have made a big difference. It's not that big of a deal, but very, very cool. And as you can see, it's kind of close to the ocean. I don't think we can actually go out there. Oh, the sites along the cliff have been closed off due to erosion and danger of your RV falling into the ocean. Now that wouldn't be good. All right, we are here at Pacifica, Pacifica. obviously. Pacifica is a Thousand Trolls collection campground. So it's an encore campground. Encore, yes. That is not like part of your Thousand Trails freebies to say like that. This, we bought the Trails collection for extra $200 a year that gives you access to all this campground for a very small fee. That in the San Francisco area, that everything is around $100. This one was $20 a night. Right, so very good deal for being in this particular area and very good deal for being the ocean that close right to the ocean. We're gonna have to find out what's going on here with the erosion that they can't park along the cliff anymore we've seen that before and I will say the spots are kind of tight we've never been this close before check this out like if we knew these people if this were Kevin and Laura we could hand coffees back and forth between our living room and their bedroom so pretty tight quarters but we're just outside of San Francisco so that's a good thing that's a good thing and like we really want to thank uh, Courtney and Amanda because they help us to stay here extra two nights yeah, that, so, that was really kind of nice. that was amazing. All right, we're going to go check out the area, and then uh, then we'll be back to get some work done. Remember how I showed these as we were driving in, that there are sites that used to be pull-ins, but the uh, cliff is eroding, and they don't want you to fall in? Well, these sites here actually already fell in. That's pretty crazy. And that's why they have this all chained off, fenced off, is because they don't want your RVs falling into the ocean. So that's a good thing. It was an absolutely beautiful drive up the coast on the way to the San Francisco area. We're actually in Pacifica, which is what, 15 miles from the city? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's somewhere around there. It's close to the have city. I to take a Google Maps for if that. If you go one. just up around the corner, you can actually see the tips of the Golden Gate Bridge. So we're not too far away. But, but the drive was beautiful. It's like driving in Scotland or Ireland. I mean, just like rolling hills, all green and cliff going to the ocean next to you. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty amazing. Beautiful. Have you driven in Scotland and Ireland? No, but that's how I imagine it. That's kind of how I imagine it. So if you're from well. over there, let me know if that's actually Yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah, if you've ever driven there, go, nah, that's not it at all. <laughs> It's awesome, but uh, we are in Pacifica. We're going to get out and explore the city by the bay, and uh, it's going to be awesome, I'm sure. But this is where we're going to end this one. So if this is your first time here, we'd love for you to hang out with us, get to know us a little bit, uh, follow us on our travels, and that means you have to... Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. We'd also love you a long time if you like the video. So if you like the video, <laughs> that'd be great, and we'll see you again next time. Bye now. Bye, guys. The aquarium has a lot of fish displays and things, but yeah. Okay, we're gonna pause for a second. And we'd also love you if, lovely long, love. And then what? That's too many bibbits. Yeah, I know. Okay, look at the camera again. <laughs> we'd also 